This video is brought to you by Wondrium. Microdosing is the new trend, but where does it fit into the mushroom revolution? Well, for context, mushrooms have not only been used for food, I love mushrooms, they're so good. But have been used for their psychoactive properties for thousands of years. This mushroom is the fly agaric. It's considered the oldest intoxicant in the world and famously used by shamanic tribes of the far north. And while it's hard to tell given the variability of caps, not even that much prepared properly could send you on a journey. In other words, read that is not a beginner mushroom. This mushroom is a psilocybin containing mushroom. This is a psilocybe mushroom, otherwise known as a magic mushroom. It was known to be used in indigenous ceremonies in Mexico and likely all over the world. About this much of this mushroom is considered a heroic dose. That's five grams. That will essentially take you to a different reality for a few hours. Researchers at Johns Hopkins used an equivalent dose of the synthesized active ingredient in these mushrooms, psilocybin, and found that there was a decrease in depression and anxiety after a single session of psilocybin. That well-controlled study showed large, rapid, and enduring decreases in depression and anxiety after a single session with psilocybin. Studies like those and others across the world are highlighting a new use for psilocybin. But what if instead of taking a high dose of these mushrooms, which could require some assistance, instead you took a very small dose? So that is microdosing. I should note this video is about microdosing psilocybin containing mushrooms. I will be talking about microdosing Amanita in a future video which will be found right here when it's ready. I'll also note that like everything I talk about here on Stone Age Man, I did my own test. Day one. Day five. 25. And I had friends do the same. I wanna make sure that the effects we see seem to line up with the results that is shown in the research. But first, let me summarize what we know so far. Microdosing was first coined by this guy, Dr. James Fadiman, now known as the father of microdosing. Microdosing is about five to 10% of a regular dose taken intermittently for the intent of improving your life. Often people will take it two to four times a week, for a few weeks to several months. Because of regulations and legality, you can't necessarily bring people into the lab and give them a microdose. It's also a long, not very strong effect. So the data he acquired was from a survey study, essentially asking people to self-report what they were using it for, what they found benefits as, and then he found trends in what was being reported. And here is what he found. The quick list, anxiety, general, social, academic, party anxiety, Asperger's syndrome, depression, ice pick headaches, personal insights that are therapeutic, work-related insights, learning. A lot of people have used it for learning and uh, we have cases of learning languages more easily, advanced math more easily. That was actually from a, from a Harvard group. Uh, more focused attention in class and many cases improved grades. Menstrual periods, elimination of PMS symptoms, both physical and emotional. They don't eliminate all migraines, but it goes down um, 80 to 90% for the people that help. For trauma, people report decreased triggering, less procrastination, better sex, or more libido. We're not sure whether it's more libido, whether it's more energy, or more closeness, better communication, et cetera. But people basically improve sexual relationships. Uh, work in general, improved work, amount of work, discrimination, workflow, quality, etc. Coming off of psychiatric medications that were deemed not helpful. And of course, the big question is, how can it have all of these positive effects? Well, they came up with a few ideas. First, it could be a placebo, which doesn't mean it's not nothing. It's really a way of stating that the body has a natural ability to heal if incentivized properly. Another option is that it could be systemic, much like, say, a vitamin. Now, you don't just take a vitamin and on the first day you notice a difference, like vitamin C or iron, for instance. But if taken over time, it helps the whole body function better. They also hypothesize that maybe it's having something to do with the mitochondria, which are the fuel source of your entire system, and they degrade over time. Maybe that has something to do with it. And a final explanation may have to do somehow with neuroplasticity. In other words, increasing the brain's ability to adapt and change to new situations. That seems to be an interesting explanation given that we know higher doses definitely increase neuroplasticity. Regardless of how it works though, people are using it to treat all of those ailments. 
And then in addition, there are unintended improvements that they found. What I mean by that is that afterwards, people reported eating healthier, working out more, and then also decreased drug uses of all sorts of different things. Not, not only just the hard things that you would think of as bad, like opiates and, and maybe tobacco, but also alcohol, caffeine, that to me is really, really interesting. Where we're at at the moment is we've got this preliminary data that the science is telling us seems to be effective for, and then we're trying to allow people to use it properly in their lives. And that's where microdosing coaches come in or health and wellness coaches. They're essentially working with each individual person and trying to make sure their dose is not too low or too high, much like how a guide would help you on a large dose. And I got one on the phone recently and asked him what his thoughts were on the whole process. When you're experiencing the benefits with really like minimal to no effects, that's kind of with a sweet spot where microdosing is. Think about like the most amazing day you've had. It's just just a normal average day where you just felt so damn good. And that's what microdosing helps you do more often. It makes you it helps you to feel like yourself, your best version of yourself, because you're able to be more present with your day. The more present you are, the happier you are, because you can't experience happiness in the past or the future. It's only something that you could experience here and now. I should note, we are trying to do more research on is this effective or is it not? One of the more recent studies seemed to indicate that there was no effect of microdosing. And the one problem with that study is that they used mostly healthy individuals to determine if microdosing was even effective. Dr. Fadiman explained the problem with that in this online clip. If we really look at it, the problem is that on the scale, if you go from eight to six, that's a huge jump, but you can't go from, if you go from three to one, that's half as much. We need to have a sample which has sufficient affective or depressive symptoms before we can actually um, measure their effects. In other words, if you don't already have a problem, you're not going to see a lot of improvement. And that could be a big problem that we see in the literature and something that we have to address moving forward. I also took a trip to see Irene Dubin, who is a psychedelic psychotherapist who uses mushrooms in her work to help people heal, to ask her what her clients report on microdosing. My clients re reported to me as well that the psilocybin helped them feeling better, just mood-wise or with a chronic pain again it might be anti-inflammatory factors right. in psilocybin sure. the proper microdose doesn't gonna give you any sense in the body it has to be sub-perceptional right. but over time one or two weeks later you may start feeling better yeah. Of course, Trad, who also runs the retreat, seems to indicate that maybe a macrodose really is the way to go. I recommend the macrodose. The microdose might numb it down for that day. And the beauty of psilocybin and a macrodose is to really get down and dig out that root, like what's rooting around in there. Let's dig it up, get a look at it, and let's, let's see how we can fix it. I tend to agree with Trad. But I know that for a lot of people, setting aside the time to do a full journey is difficult, it's scary. But if you just had a small amount in powdered form and you could take in the morning and see how your body reacted to it, that would be easier for some people. So what did I find? It seems like a silly thing, but it's a huge thing. Found ways to organize that I haven't been able to uh, for like over a year. I found it on days that I microdosed, I did feel better. I thought everything looked prettier, especially outside. It allowed me to do medial tasks a lot easier. So uh, say I was out weeding in the yard, things that would drive me crazy before because it just was time consuming. Basically anything that I do outside, which is a little bit monotonous, was quite enjoyable. And so there is a time and place for that. And I have a lot of those things I have to put into my life. I generally have a little, it's not even an anxiety. It's just like an impatience um, trying to get all of these things done. I will say the one downside that I found was that on days that I microdose, especially if I took just a little bit too much, um, then I started to feel something. So it wasn't like maybe nothing. Maybe, maybe that's where I need a microdose coach. <laughs> but uh, I did find that I do a lot of complex problem solving and I could tell that there was a slight decrease in my cognitive ability. Not much. Um, much like if you had half a glass of alcohol, you wouldn't say that it decreased your ability to have social interactions. In fact, it would actually increase your ability to do, have social interactions. But you definitely would be a little bit wary of, are you going to get behind a wheel? Are you going to um, do anything that could 
could require all of your brain power because even if you don't notice, you know that it's slightly decreased. Now I noticed it. In the end, it did help me decrease negative chatter in my head. So that's, I think, why it helps different people differently. I don't think I need it on a long-term basis um, or even short-term anymore. I got what I needed out of it and I can go from there. So you'll have to decide for yourself and what your opinions are. If you have experienced microdosing, leave your comments down below. If you're trying to figure out how am I gonna get into this, stay tuned till the very end because I have the best resources. You're not gonna find them in the comments generally because bots, you never can trust them. All right, so I can't make any recommendations whether to try or not try microdosing as it's not legal technically in a lot of places still. I think that will change, but for now, that's where we're stuck. I'm just trying to report on the science as we know it, and I know that Dr. Fadiman's group has some of the best resources. In fact, if you go to microdosing.com, they are developing an app where you can input the days that you microdose, your mood, that will go into a data set that will help people in the future so we can use the scientific method to figure out what are the best ways to microdose. I'm gonna wrap by saying I've left links to the full interviews of the people that I talked to. How do people get started in something like this? How do you advise people to start Start. I think if you're already interested in this, you're gonna probably wanna be watching those. Those are on my Patreon post that I posted today. So you can backtrack if you're looking in the future to today's post, links down in the description for that. In addition, I fully recommend this book by Dr. Fadiman, which is probably the Bible for this sort of thing. And I got an online book on microdosing. It's an easy guide on how to get started. I will be talking about the new studies on Amanita microdosing, which is a fascinating field in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that when it comes out. Okay, we'll see you then.